Welcome to today's episode where we will solve the problem copy, 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 copy. Ehab has an array A of length n. He has just enough free time to make a new array consisting of n copies of the old array written back to back. What will be the length of the new array's longest increasing subsequence? A sequence A is a subsequence of an array B if A can be obtained from B by deletion of several possible zero or all elements. The longest increasing subsequence of an array is the longest subsequence such that its elements are ordered in strictly increasing order. The first line contains an integer t, the number of test cases you need to solve. The description of the test case follows. The first line of each test case contains an integer n, with n between 1 and 10 to the power of 5, the number of elements in the array a. The second line contains n space separated integers, with a i between 1 and 10 to the power of 9, the elements of the array a. The sum of n across the test cases doesn't exceed 10 to the power of 5. Output. For each test case, output the length of the longest increasing subsequence of A if you concatenate it to itself n times. Then we have here two examples. This is the first one. You get three numbers, 3, 2, 1. And the second one are six numbers, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9. And here's an explanation how this works. In the first sample, the new array is 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 1. And you take in the first one the number 1, then the number 2, and then the number 3. So you concatenate the sequence n times together and then delete several elements to get the longest subsequence. Long text, a little bit complicated, but it's very easy. So you just have to find out how many unique numbers are here in your input. And therefore, we will use a set. It helps us to solve the problem. I just want to tell you a few information about a set in Python. A set is a built-in data type. That means you can use it without installing anything else than just Python. It's an unordered and unindexed data type. It's not that important that you understand this first problem just as a information. It's written with curly brackets. And the most important thing, there are no duplicate values allowed in a set. I explain this now. Let's see here, we have our set. You can see it with the curly brackets. And we will just do some things in our set. So here we have some animals. The first one we have a cat. We say add this to our set and we have a cat in there. In the next step we want to add a dog and we add the dog to the set. Then we have a bird and add a bird to it. And now the interesting part comes. If you want to add another cat in this, then this doesn't work. The program is not interrupted by this. It just skips the adding to the set. We will start with some comments what we need to do. First, we get the input t, the number of test cases we need to solve. That means we need to read t. Then we have to solve for t test cases the next step. It means we need a loop t times. And next we get the information n, the number of integers in the array a. We will read this information, but we will not save it. Then we get the array a, the space separated integers. We will read the values and split them at the blank. The result of the process is a list with all the integers in it. We need to transform this list to a set.
And finally, we have to print out the length of the set. Now let's write the code. To read the values, we use the input function. For splitting, we use rsplit and split it space separated. For transforming the red values to a set, we use the set constructor and just give it the list as an input. To get the length of the set, we use the len function and print it out to the command line. Now we can submit the solution. And we can see that the solution was accepted. What we learned today is that a set just contains unique numbers or unique elements in it. If you want to add an element that is even available in the set, then it's just not added to the set once again, so it's just one copy in there. And to transform a list to a set, you just use the constructor of the set give the list to it as an input and then you get a set of the list. If you have any questions or comments to the video, just let me know by a comment down below. If you liked the video, I would appreciate if you give it a like. Thank you for watching and see you at the next video. Bye!